Guys, welcome back to another episode driving the GPR. So we're not working on it today, other than checking the oil, that is. A few modifications that I've done since coming back from Sydney. The first one being the catch can setup. So we have now deleted the catch can over there or crankcase breather can as it was and turned it into a catch can again. So now we've got our mines baffle kit in the RB covers, breathing through the covers. We go straight to this ATP catch can, how it was originally. Then what we've done is on this side over here where we used to have the valves breathing to, so over the top had the nice big thick dash 16 hose to the ATP catch can at the front. This is now the crankcase breather can. Pressure sensor circuit, low input, then it won't clear. Okay, and then we'll go for a drive. Gone to go for a spin and we found a fault code. Now the fault code is for fuel pressure, low input. So straight away, check the fuel pressure sensor, all looked okay. The wiring looked okay. Check the plug, unplugged it all, checked it. Grabbed a new fuel pressure sensor, plugged it in, still reads the same. So that was all out. I just did it outside, out the front of the workshop. Okay, so I think I've actually sorted out all our issues in one go here. When I moved the car onto the hoist, I actually lost brakes or power assist to the brakes. So, which straight away means it, the brakes are all okay mechanically. So it was the vacuum advanced in the brakes or the brake booster. So it pretty well tells you one thing, you've got a leak somewhere. And straight away, I come in here to have a look and just sort of gazed down here. I actually rerouted that because it went over there. And it looked a bit funny. Straight away, I come down here, I knew there was something along here wrong. We've already checked the sensor. The sensor's okay. We swapped it over with another one. And just out of sheer luck, that was just sitting almost on top of the water pump. So these are seals, the, the air seals that go in the center, or sorry, not in the center. They go along the shaft and they seal up any boost or vacuum. So I noticed that one of them was slightly popped out the other day and I popped them back in, that one. These two here can't fall out because they're sort of held in by this lever, which goes down to the drive-by-wire motor. This one here is in place. That one there has slid across, but I can poke it back in. So you'll see it, how it's just sort of out there. That one there's out, 
that one there's in. Luckily, that one can't go any further because it's got that center retainer, which is locking the shafts together. And I'm guessing I've lost, oh, that end one's just about to pop out. So, need to figure out how to hold them in place. So when I did this drive-by-wire kit, the ITV kit, I come with little white retainers to hold these in. But we was told to not fit them because they had actually melted and could catch on fire. So I'm gonna talk to my specialist, Anthony from Dartone Racing, and see what the answer is here, because I'm not sure yet. But that explains the loss of brake pedal. So when I mean carefully and not much, this is literally all you want, just around the edge of a retaining compound. You don't want to get it on whoop, any ceiling surface. Sort of rotate it. There we go. Right, now the whole seal's covered. So try and keep it upright. Put it down on the shaft. You might as well be a fucking surgeon. There we go. Slide it along. Bang. Okay, so a bit of an update on our fuel pressure sensor issue. Went through, checked all the wiring, checked there was voltage at pin four, which is the five volt positive wire. Then you've got signal ground and your two wires for temp and pressure. Everything was actually okay. The loom was okay. I threw in another sensor, a spare motorsport sensor that I had. Got all the sensors back in place. Got the new motorsport sensor in there, the Bosch motorsport one. Yeah, got all the rest of the sensors hooked up, changed over that wiring. Why, uh, while I'm sort of doing a bit of wiring, I've actually done a couple of things that I wanted to do before we uh, went down to GDR Fest and that was just delete some of this wiring correctly out of this harness. So I sort of just had it hidden away but I want to delete it completely so it frees up any mess. We're not using this little coolant temp switch anymore that's for the factory dash so i'm going to bung that off and then i'll put everything back tidy in our frenchie's performance garage billet sensor loom block and i also want to tidy up the trigger wiring so that's our crank and cam angle sensor wiring mitch from zully motorsport has been kind enough to start teaching me a few things about m tune data logging and loading calibrations and just doing stuff that um, will take the, the pressure off Mitch or my tuner Sean. So he's been kind enough to show me how to load a sensor calibration and the ECU needs to know that calibration to work properly. Now please, there's probably gonna be guys watching this channel that are tuners or know this stuff. So just ignore it, I guess, or skip forward. But for the guys that don't know about that, I thought it'd be pretty cool to show you. Okay, so you wanna open mtune or whatever program that you use whether it be howtech motec whatever it is okay so you want to open a calibration file or whatever it is you might have one that you already plugged into the ecu in the actual car so you want to go to configuration uh, channels this has got all your sensors so manifold pressure boost pressure so let's do fuel pressure first. So you just want to double click on it. And there we go. That brings up your sensor calibration, okay? So this is calibrated to the old sensor that was in it and we want to update it. Now you can manually put it in up here. So you can put in your, yep, your volts there and put in the calibration for it. Or you can do it like this, which is pretty cool. So down the bottom right corner, go load calibration, PT combo pressure sensor and Bosch combo temp. Now we're doing pressure. So you want to insert and load the pressure calibration. And then on the M tune, you want to press F4 and F2, which will save it to the ECU and then save it to your computer as well. And that's it, you're done. How cool is that? And then your ECD, ECU is updated with that e sensor calibration. So pretty cool. All right, now we've done that, let's fix up this wiring and go for a drive. <laughs>
Let's fucking see. to-do list is get some more fuel <laughs> what do you reckon anyway mate unreal it's pretty unreal. cool mate. oh fuck i'm never gonna live this down whoopsies what are we doing here uh went for a little bit of a drive and ran out of fuel what do you reckon unreal mate head gas for sure <laughs> We thought we run out of fuel. I think we'd shut down. We've had the worst thing happen. But we've had an oil pump belt come off. Yeah, so we've, we've worked out that our power steer belt has come off and then it's wrapped itself in the oil belt and pulled it off. Right, you might just check that for you. Righto boys. Whoever welded that would have to be on fucking five grand a week. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, first things first, drop the oil out. The oil actually looks really clean. Oh shit. Just missed the bucket. The oil looks good. It's definitely had an oil loss from where the belt stopped pumping the oil pump. Luckily, the M-Tron was fast enough to cut the engine out from high RPM. I just need to remove the rear housing. Everything looks fine so far. What I am going to do though, so this turbo, I'm actually unsure whether we're going to use it again or it may go to one of our viewers actually reached out and He's got, got a couple of twins, 2867s, that I originally had way back when this car had a 2.6 litre uh, forged cast engine. So I'm actually interested in those twins. I did like those. It was a good OEM plus sort of option. Um, and he has actually reached out and may be interested taking on this HKS G40, which is really cool. Either way, what I'm going to do is that turbo will go to GCG just to be checked over. If it needs a new, any, any new parts it needs, they, they will sort us out for us. So, James at GCG, we ordered our new Garrett G4 this morning and I'm pretty excited about that. I can't wait to get it on the car. And we'll send this one. And I've actually got another turbo that I'm going to send back to GCG just to be checked over as well. All looking good so far.
What's up everybody? It's all happening here, working on the GTR again. Pretty pumped to be working back on it again. I know we just finished it, but that's what the channel's all about. It is working on GTRs and Skylines. So we actually took it out for a spin the other day. I went to take one of the painters who helped paint the car. We wanted to go for a drive. He'd never been in a GTR before. And we actually, while we were doing like a first, second, third, Right as I went from third to fourth gear, I had the engine cut out. So what had actually happened is I initially thought it was out of fuel because I hadn't had the warning, the proper warning lights programmed or the warning lights set up on the dash. So the ECU will still cut out. I just didn't get the, the warning what it was up on the dash. But what had actually happened is I had a power steering belt come off it was just under 8000 rpm and what it did it could have flung off and went any other direction it it went for the only direction it could cause any sort of fucking annoyance and it took out my oil pump belt so i kid you not it could have went anyway and it missed everything didn't leave a mark and took out our oil pump belt so Luckily again that we have a very fast acting Mtron ECU in the car and it cut power completely. So there was no damage done whatsoever. It was just an unlucky incident. Thank you Mtron for saving the day. And it all sort of worked out anyway because I, we ordered the new turbo this week. So we should see that next week, maybe the week after. Anyway guys, we're gonna get this turbo off to GCG. Hopefully we'll have our new one shortly. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Wait till you see the next video on us putting big whirly boy on.